welcome back to the Brie Myself and God channel where I'm bringing you all things Brie and all things God. And today is a special video because these are the Cuffing Season Chronicles, okay? So it's getting cold outside. I know that people want people to spend time with. They want some company. They want some cuddles. I know COVID-19 is making it worse because it's just like we're not even getting out like we're used to even to see our friends. So I just wanted to make a video about how to identify if somebody that's trying to spend time with you is actually about to waste your time. And I'm addressing this to the ladies because I feel like we just get the short end of the stick a lot of the times when it comes to getting our time wasted in these streets. But I will say that I think there's some useful stuff in here for men too. So listen in. Just for context of how I'm defining wasting my time, I consider something a waste of time if I don't think it's going to lead to any long-term benefit. So for me, when it comes to relationships, I am not actually just trying to be cuffed for a season, okay? I'm trying to be cuffed for a lifetime, okay? I'm ready for somebody to come put a ring on it. I'm not necessarily saying I'm ready right now, but that's what I'm looking for in the long term. And in the meantime, I'm not trying to be having a rotation of men that are just not it in and out of my life. So if you feel a similar way and you want to make sure that you're engaging with high quality people in and out of cuffing season in your dating life, then this video is for you. Without further ado, and in the interest of not wasting time, here are five signs that he is wasting your time, my sis. <laughs> Number one, if he is not clear or consistent with his intentions with you. Because here's some one thing that I know about men. They actually know what they want. So if you're dealing with a man and you're having to fix your mouth to say, what is this? What are we? What do you want with us? I think he's probably wasting your time because he probably has a sense of that. And if he isn't taking the time to communicate that to you, that's a problem. Number two, if he doesn't know a wife when he sees one, that's a problem. If he doesn't see that you are worth being pursued with intention and transparency, that's a problem. And then some guys will try to communicate their intentions, but they're not consistent about it, right? So they might clearly say to you, I just want to be friends but then they wanna be all up in your face, cuddled up with you, watching movies, have you pretty much being like a girlfriend with no title, a little situationship? Yeah, that's a no, that's a waste of time because what do you really want? The benefits without the commitment, that's a no. Or they might actually tell you that they want the commitment but be showing you the opposite because they don't spend adequate time with you, they don't prioritize you, they're still out in these streets dealing with other girls that's a sign that they're not matching up their actions with what they're saying to you about their intentions and they're probably wasting your time. So number one, they're not clear or consistent with their intentions. Just cut it. Cut it while you can. Number two, now a man might be clear that he wants to pursue you and that he wants you and that's great. I'm glad you know a wife when you see one. I'm glad that you can recognize the value of what's in front of you. Wonderful. But that's not the only standard. The next four things on this list are about identifying, okay, this person wants me, but do I want them? And do I think that this can actually go somewhere in the long term? So number two is, does this person have direction in their life? If they don't have direction in their life, they're probably wasting your time. Here's why I say this. We all have a purpose in this world. We all have callings and we all should be working towards that in our day-to-day -day lives. If the man that you're dealing with doesn't have goals, doesn't have a sense of his passions, his callings, what he's put on this earth to do, he doesn't have to have that all answered. But if he isn't working towards that, if he isn't working towards some kind of goal with intention and direction, then he might be wasting your time because really he doesn't need to be pursuing you until he has that figured out for himself. And here's why I say that. Because I'm out here trying to build something. I'm trying to build my career, my ministry, my business. I'm trying to build a life that is adding so much value to the world and to the kingdom of God. And if you're not building something, then how can we combine and build together? So he really should have direction in his life and be moving, like making progress in the direction of what he's called to before he tries to start pursuing you. And if he doesn't have that and we're fully grown, listen, if you're high school watching this, okay, that's one thing, but fully grown and we should have some things figured out by now and we should be making that progress. And even if you're in a place where you don't have it all figured out, are you moving with excellence and intention um, and diligence in the direction of whatever is before you? So if he's not doing that, it's a no for me. Number three, is he emotionally or relationally immature? If he is, 
he's probably wasting your time. Now, granted, I do think that men are at a huge disadvantage in this area because society has trained them to not be vulnerable, to not communicate emotions, to not express their, their feelings and things of that nature. So, you know, if you're in the process of unlearning that, I'm okay with working through some of that. But I think having a baseline of emotional maturity, ability to communicate and ability to function well in relationships in a mature way is really important. So if you're seeing signs of, come on, like toxic masculinity, that's a no-go. Fragile male ego, that's a no-go. Don't know how to communicate or treat you with respect, it's a no for me. So for example, I was talking to this guy one time and he was trying to ask me out, but without asking me out and being clear about it. So I was kind of like, I'm a literal person. So I'm like, what are you saying? I don't get it. I don't understand. He started saying stuff like, well, it's a pretty simple concept, yada, yada, yada. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, what you're not about to do is put your fragile male ego on me and try to talk down to me and make me seem like I'm stupid because you're not communicating clearly. That's not, that's what we're not about to do. So to the left, you go. Another time I was on a date with a guy, a first date, and we were playing a game. And I think that I accidentally hurt him in the process of playing the game. And in response, he playfully smacked me on my butt. Oh, so you don't know how to treat me with basic respect. You don't know that my body is not yours to touch when you don't even know me like that. Oh yeah, no, you guys to go. But just in general, when you're talking to him, do you feel like he knows how to value your feelings and respond to your feelings as well as express his own? Does he just treat you well? And not only you, but you can look at also how he functions in his other relationships to get a good sign of this. Is he a good son, brother, coworker? Just does he know how to treat people? Does he know how to interact in relationships in a mature way? If you're seeing immaturity in this area, you might need to abort the mission. Not to mention that a lot of times I think that toxic masculinity, fragile male ego, lack of basic respect are could also be signs that someone could end up being abusive in the long run. And you do not want that. That can be so much pain down the line. And so if he's not showing you the utmost respect that you are worthy of, that you absolutely deserve and that it should automatically be given to you, he got to go, okay? Number four, yes, four. Is he spiritually immature or not aligned with you? This is a really big one for me because anybody who knows me knows that God is my life. God is my everything. I'm building my life based on my relationship with God. And so for me, a man that I'm looking to be seriously involved with has to have a similar foundation. Is Jesus your Lord? Is the Bible your foundation? Is the Holy Spirit your guide? These are non-negotiables for me. Now, that might not be everybody's story. Not everybody has the same exact standards as me, and that's okay. But I think that you should have a sense of your standards for spiritual development because here's why I think that's important for everybody. I believe that faith and connection to God is a source of grounding. It's a source of healing. It's a source of identity. And I once read this post that said, men who are broken are always attracted to women who are healers. But here's, here's one thing I know about myself. Any healing power that's in me is coming from God, my savior. And I would rather that you go to the source rather than try to make me your source. When someone is not spiritually grounded or mature, then they're trying to pull out of you something that you're getting from your own source. They have to get their own source, okay? I can't heal you, I can't save you, only Jesus can do that. He did it for me, he can do it for you. I can't do it for you. So you need to be saved and healed and delivered. I need to be saved and healed and delivered and we can be whole together and then support each other in our journey. But I honestly feel like so much of what we see in just romance in general, a lot of times is people trying to make their significant other what really only God should be to them. So that's why I think that spiritual maturity is actually so important when you're looking for a partner and making sure that you're aligned with that. Um, because for me, my heart is so deep in God that you need to know God if you're going to know how to love me. So find out what, what is your standard in this area? What does it look like for you to be aligned with values and with spirituality with your potential future person? And last but not least, is he pulling you away from your goals and your best self? If he is, then he's wasting your time. We all have goals. We all have things we're trying to do. We all have standards we're trying to live up to. We don't do it perfectly, but we try. And what my apostle said is that a relationship will either focus you and push you in that right direction or it'll distract you and push you in that wrong direction. And so really assess the impact that this person that you're dealing with has on you and ask like, am I my best self dealing with them? Or do I feel pushed away from my best self? For me, Here's how, here's, here's a very easy standard that helps weed a lot of people out for me. 
I am celibate and waiting till marriage. This is a commitment that I've made to God that I believe that he asks of me. And for me, I don't wanna deal with guys who are not on that same page because what is gonna happen? We're two adult individual sexual beings. We're probably gonna end up making that mistake if you're not even really on the same page about wanting to wait. And so that's, a, that's an important standard for me because that's the commitment that I made to God. That's part of me being my best self. And so if you're gonna pull me away from that because you don't share that conviction, then I don't want it. For you, it might not be celibacy, but it might be some other goal that you have. Maybe you're trying to stop you know, smoking all the time, but the guy that you're dealing with smokes all the time. And so all y'all do is smoke. You know, maybe you are trying to, it could literally be anything. Maybe you just have goals that you're trying to focus on, but he distracts you so much that you're just not even focused on your goals. It could be anything, but just ask yourself, am I my best self when I'm dealing with you or am I not? And if the answer is no, then that I would wait for somebody who really pushes you in that right direction. So those are my five signs that he's wasting your time, sis lack of clarity in his intentions with you, lack of direction in his own life, relationally or emotionally immature, spiritually immature or not aligned and pushing you away from your best self. If he's doing any of those things, he just might be wasting your time, sis. And I just wanted to let you know because our time is too valuable to waste. I don't know about you, but I'm out here trying to build something and I feel like I know that the price of my time is only going up from here. Like it's only going up, baby boy. So. What you're not about to do is waste it because on one hand, I'm waiting for a man that I really believe will come into my life and build something with me. And I don't wanna waste my time on counterfeits or I don't wanna be not even available to the man that's really for me because I'm dealing with guys that are not it. But then waiting for a man aside, my time and your time is just too valuable to waste. So that's why I made this video. I hope that you got something valuable out of it. And if you decided that he is not worth your time, listen, there are so many other things that you could be pouring your time into. So don't fall into loneliness and depression because listen, you're that one, never that two. Just because you're not dealing with a man doesn't mean that you're incomplete. There are so many things that we can do to have full lives, even when we're not dealing with men, even during cuffing season. You can be focusing on your career. You can be focusing on your friendships. You can be focusing on your family. You can be focusing on your business. You could be focusing on yourself and your relationship with God, which I believe is the most important thing ever. So there's so many things that we can be spending our time on that don't include men that are only going to waste it. So <laughs> I hope that this video um, blessed you. I hope you got something out of it. And if you liked it, I just would hope that you would thumbs up it, subscribe to my channel, follow me on IG at Bree Myself and God, and keep coming back for more content. There will be more videos in the Cuffing Season Chronicles. And in general on this channel, I share things about myself and things about that I've learned in my walk with God that I hope can bless other people. So I hope that uh, this blessed you and I will see you next time, okay? Bye.